and what you really want is to be able to get away for a week or a weekend as I've just done and I've just driven from Sydney to beautiful Echuca here on the Murray River. Oh look, a houseboat. But come around this way, have a look over here. All of these paddle steamers, that's what the Murray's known for and it's what a Chuka's known for. And over here, the old port. And just down here is where the tourist boats leave from. And how did I get here, you may well ask, I'm glad you asked, in this. A Toyota Prado Kakadu. This is a really lovely spot, though the weather's turned turtle, unfortunately. But this is what once Australia all looked like with these little tourist towns that have been converted from original, in this case, Port Town, where all of the wool and the goods and services from inland Victoria was brought here and then taken on that train back down there to Melbourne. An old chum took me for a quick ride up the Murray on board the PS Canberra. The paddle steamer was launched in 1913 and continues now in private ownership. In the old days, paddle steamers transported goods from all over the Murray-Darling River system to be used both within Australia and elsewhere in the Commonwealth. In those days, much of Australia's wealth came from sending goods back to the motherland, in inverted commas, England. The port's heyday is long gone. Like much of the industrial era, Echuca is now a tourist attraction in the form of a small living theme park. I've just put some diesel in the car and I've left Echuca and I'm now back on the road, back to Sydney. It's a really miserable day, the clouds have come over and when I was just on the riverbank now, there was a calmness that you find out here in the country. It is achingly beautiful, very dry at the moment. So far, the Prado has been magnificent. Not perhaps as nice on the road as you might expect of a $90,000 car, but it does have all of the safety gear present and accounted for. My cruise control set now, and you just heard the beeper go, that's my lane warning. And unlike most modern cars that have lane warning, this one gets you back into the lane by subtle braking as opposed to applying pressure to the steering wheel. We've got automatic LED lights, and most importantly, Apple CarPlay on my screen as we speak. We also have navigation here on the main screen and here on my auxiliary screen between the driver's dials. One thing that I did like on the way down is the centre console is a cooled box, so I had some soft drink in there that was kept nice and chilly and some water as well. I've done 796.6 kilometres, and my average fuel consumption is 10.2 litres per 100 kilometres. I know this is a big car, it's a big beast. It's very tall and very slab-sided but I thought 10.2 litres per 100 kilometres was a little bit disappointing. And this is all there is. Long, straight stretches. I hadn't seen a car in about half an hour. And it's all like this. Flat, featureless farmland. As far as the eye can see. And I haven't seen cars more than one or two at a time for about two hours. It's about 10 past five and I've done 1,214 kilometres so far. So here's a few things that I can report on our Prado. This top of the range model has had an extra couple of things. A little bit of extra power has helped no end. Going up a very long hill now, 
I haven't needed to drop it back a gear. The transmission could do with an extra couple of gears. It's only got six, and Toyota and Lexus in their fleet have eight and 10 speed automatics. And I really think that'd help. My fuel consumption has gone down 9.2 litres per 100 kilometres. Now, you'll remember from before, it was more up around 10 litres per 100 kilometres. The seats are really comfortable. And I found that my back really gets sore on long trips, so I put the seat heating on and put the lumbar support all the way out. Now that I'm on the main highway, I haven't touched the brake or the accelerator pedal for about an hour and a half, two hours. The centre console, it still looks a little bit old fashioned. The buttons are absolutely enormous. The screen is a little bit bigger and I reckon that's made a huge difference. The sound from the sound system is adequate. Though for a car nigh on $90,000, I'd have expected a bit more. The steering wheel is laid out nice and neatly. The dashboard is laid out nice and neatly. All the buttons are backlit, it makes sense. The menus are easy to find and there's a digital speedo. So to answer the question, can you actually do a road trip in one of these cars, like I'm always telling you that you can do, the answer is yes. As you can see, it's gotten dark. I've got 24 kilometers, about 20 minutes to go till I get home. Just the last 10 minutes or so, I started to feel a bit tired. We've gotten down to 8.8 liters per 100 kilometers. According to the gauge, there's 214 kilometers left because I did put 40 liters of extra fuel in in Ichuka. It's taken about eight and a half hours. The car's been really quiet, super quiet in fact. So if you've liked our mini road trip and mini car review, hit like, leave a comment. And just over there to subscribe.